Hello and welcome to How to Stop Wasting Time. My name's Jeff. I'm glad that you're here. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I love sharing the things I've learned about Excel over the years, especially the things that help us work faster. And I'm excited for today's session because we get to talk about how to stop wasting time. And we know what wasting time means, but I looked up the definition and it says, spend time doing something that is unnecessary. In other words, spending more time than is necessary to do something, right? And we Excel users, we fall into this without even realizing it, right? Because when we all start out, we all start at the same place, right? Manual, right? We open Excel for the very first time. We see this empty grid and then we start getting in and, and figuring stuff out. We try to do some stuff and we end up doing a lot of things manually. Why? Just because we, we don't know more efficient options, but our goal is automated. And when we're doing things manually that could be automated, what does it mean? we're spending more time that is necessary. So what's the, what's the thing that gets us from manual to automated? It's simple, it's just Excel knowledge. And this is the same for everyone. The more we learn, the more we're able to move to the right, the more we're able to move from manual to automated. So today, we're gonna talk about five things that's gonna hopefully move us to the right from manual to automated. We're gonna look at a table, we're gonna look at a function, a pivot table, power query, and the data model, okay? That's the admin stuff. Now let's get right into the heart of, of our webinar. Okay, we're gonna start with this one report and we're gonna watch the progression of it. We're gonna watch it go from manual to automated and we're gonna see the journey that all of us take, right? Starting manually and then learning a couple of classic Excel things that help make it better and then learning some more of the modern tools that help make it even better. So we're gonna try to move this report to the right. How? Excel knowledge, that's all it is. So let's start here, and I'm gonna um, open up a workbook called Classic Excel, okay? Okay, so this is the report, and this is the report that I update every day, week, month, quarter, year. It's this recurring use report, and the structure of the report is the same every day, week, month, quarter, year. The only thing that changes are the values. The values change. These come out of some accounting system, I export it from somewhere and the numbers change, but the report structure doesn't. The values here, I need to update them. So maybe at the beginning of our journey, you know, we do something like, you know, we use Excel like a digital 10 key. And, and by that I just mean we're writing formulas like this, plus 25573, plus 39441, plus 24868, plus 47562, plus 13890 plus 11,655, and on and down we go. Okay, and we finish the report. We print it off, we save the workbook, close it, move on with our life, life is good. Until next month, until next day, week, month, quarter, year, until next period, until the next time we need to update this report. Remember, the numbers change. Do these values? No, no, so what do I have to do? You already know what I have to do. I have to rewrite each and every formula. And we're like, hmm, that took a long time. I wonder if there's a more efficient approach. And so then you're like, well, you know what? Th these values change, but their cell references, their cell references, I think, pretty much stay the same. So l let's just do this. Equals this plus this plus this. Equals this plus this equals this and so on and so forth. We finish out the report, save, close, move on, life, life good until next period. Next period comes around and if the values change but the cell references don't, we're good. But <laughs> life isn't that predictable, is it? S sometimes, sometimes there's a new account. Maybe there's multiple accounts. Maybe we insert a new cash and cash equivalents, a payroll checking account. When we add new accounts, guess what? We're, we're rewriting formulas, you know, to include the new rows. Or what happens if we change the sort order of the data? Oh, Jeff, Excel just updates everything when, when we sort, you know, it just rewrites it, it handles everything. Well, does it? Let's try to sort this. And before I do, let's look at cash and cash equivalents, 89882. Let me go ahead and change the sort order and change, uh, sort it from A to Z, and hmm, that stinks. Everything is broken. 
Why? Because Excel doesn't change cell references, doesn't rewrite formulas when we sort the data. So now what are we doing? Now we're rewriting. One, two, three, four, five. We're rewriting all of the formulas. Okay. So we're like, huh, that worked for a while, but it's kind of fragile. It kind of breaks. When it breaks, I'm rewriting formulas. Maybe there's a more efficient approach. So let's try to move it another notch to the right. Okay, we're going to talk about tables and sum ifs to do it. So let's start over here on the data sheet. And let's convert this ordinary range into a table. Why? Because of a couple of reasons, but one is tables auto expand to include new rows. How do we do this table thing? Well, we just select any cell within the range and go to insert table. Then we click OK. And now Excel has inserted a table. Table tools design, the table has a name, table one. So hang on, let's just take it one step at a time. I've inserted a table, I get this fancy formatting, but then table tools design, what is all this? Tables have a lot of properties and options. And in the like 60 minutes today, I don't have time to cover all of this stuff, but I would encourage you to check it out. There's a lot of settings for tables. But the one I want to talk about today is right here. It's the first one called table name. Tables have names. So instead of using like A1 style references like equals, um, what's this going to be? D11 plus, you know, D12. Instead of referencing the values in a table by using direct cell references, we want to use the table's name instead. This table was named table one. So what if I just type it in equals table one? Now I'm referring to all of the cells in the table. What if I don't know the table's name? I could just hit equals and then I could just select the range. And when I do, look at that. Excel inserts the, the corresponding table name. And check this out. I can even reference individual columns if I want to. Equals. And I select this column and now look at this. I get the corresponding, this is a fancy term, structured table reference. It just means the name that refers to certain areas within a table. And this structure table reference begins with the table's name, table one, followed by the, the column name in square brackets, amount. And what if I want to refer to this column? It's just table one FS line. What about this column? There we go. And there's other structure table references, but this gives you the idea. Okay. So tables auto expand when we type new stuff under it. Like if we go payroll um, checking, um, cash and cash equivalents, you know, 1,000. Maybe we even have a payroll savings account. Cash and cash equivalents, 2,000. Okay, so the tables auto expand. Tables auto expand. And we get names. So let's kind of start to put all these things together. And let's talk about how to address that sort order issue. Okay, the sort order issue. To address this sort order issue, we're going to use a function called sum ifs. And it goes like this equals sum ifs. And then there's some argument names, sum range, criteria range one, criteria one. I've come up with a narrative that makes it easier for me to remember how to write this formula, like how to do the arguments. And hopefully this narrative uh, helps you as well. But I think about it like this. Add up this column of numbers, comma, only include those rows where this column, comma, is equal to this value. Close the function. Before I hit enter, let's just take a review here. I'm asking the sum is function. That's a multiple condition summing function. What does that even mean? Well, it's a sum function. It adds stuff up. But ifs, it's conditional. It only includes certain rows. So I'm asking the sum is function to add up this entire amount column, but to only include certain rows, to only include those rows where this FS line column is equal to our FS line value. Enter. Nice. We get the expected value, 89,882. Now watch this. I can actually just copy that formula, and I can actually just paste it here, and it'll work. Hold on. How's it going to work? The table's over on the other sheet. I know. That's OK. This table name refers to the tables where, wherever they are, even if they're on a different sheet. So I can still reference that table from, from my report. Okay. And now here's the great thing. I'm not writing custom or unique formulas like I did before. Remember, before I wrote individual custom formulas. Now I can use this idea of a consistent formula. 
and the formula consistency principle is big in Excel. It just means that I should be able to write one formula and then copy and paste it down and it should work. And here it does. 266.313, 266.313. Same report as before, but we updated it. We moved it more to the right. We save, we close, we move on with our life. Life is good even next period because next period, what happens? Well, we change the sort order and guess what? <laughs> Nothing, nothing breaks. Everything is still working. Okay, what if we add a new, a new account? Payroll, uh, payroll checking, cash and cash equivalents, one thousand. It, it it flows right in. There it is, ninety eight eight two, and now I'm off balance. Now, of course, if I add a new FS line, then I'm going to have to insert a new row, and fill the formula down. Okay, but if I'm adding a new account that maps to an existing FS line, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So let's recap. Tables auto expand. How did I insert this table? I selected any cell in the ordinary range and I went to insert table. That was it. Okay. And then how did I get this function? It's the sum ifs function. Okay, let's write it again. Equals sum ifs. We want to add up this column of numbers. We only want to include those rows where this FS line is equal to our FS line. Close the function and enter. Okay, then we just did a quick little copy and paste. And then we just copy and pasted it down the reports. And we got it. 266313, 266313. Okay, good? All right. That's how Classic Excel can help move our report to the right. This report is far more automated and far more reliable than it was just a few moments ago back in exercise one. Okay, So can we keep moving it to the right? Totally. We're just getting warmed up. So let me go ahead. <laughs> this is too fun. I hope you guys are having a good time. Let's go ahead and do this and, and let's go to some resources. If this was the first time you've seen tables or some ifs, I have an additional resource that you can check out. Check out the power of mapping. How do you get there? Just go to the Excel University website click articles and these are all the kind of formal like published articles I've done feel free to check out any that look interesting the one I'm after right now is here the power of mapping click that and it's gonna take you through all the steps um, really for the exercise that we just did it's it's pretty close anyway um, but it's gonna introduce you to tables and the sum is function so feel free to check that out uh, if that will be helpful okay um, now I'm gonna do a quick introduction this is a fast series of screenshots, and this is what I like to call how I got the best job ever. I hope it's an entertaining way to do a, a webinar intro, okay? Growing up, I always loved computers and technology, so in my sixth grade yearbook, which is pictured here, I wrote, I want to be a computer specialist, and I like almost every food. Um, in junior high, I was in an after-school computer programming class, and I loved learning more about computers. We programmed in BASIC. I remember spending hours mesmerized by spreadsheets on my Mac, junior high, right? By high school, forget it, I was a total dork. But I loved learning more and more about Excel. It helped me get my work done, my homework done faster. After that, I studied accounting formally at the University of Southern California. After that, I worked with smart and ethical CPAs at Arthur Anderson. After that, I was on the finance team at Gateway. I continued learning how to use Excel. I continued um, seeing how it could help me get my work done faster. After that, I was the, uh, an accounting manager at, the public, at a public biotech company, Interport Cross. And this is where it all like, finally came together. All that Excel prep finally paid off huge. Because when I arrived, our monthly close was two weeks. And during that two-week process, I was, I was stressed. I was overwhelmed. I, I was. Why? Because I had more work than time. And I don't know if you can relate. But I was working late nights, weekends. I was cranky, grouchy. I was grumpy. And I was like, man, things have to change. Th this is crazy. Working like a crazy person. And that's when I started systematically replacing manual tasks with Excel's automated features. I, I, I figured out how to set up my Excel workbooks in the right way, which functions helped, which features helped, how it all fits together. And by the time I left, that monthly close was down to two days, sometimes even one, sometimes even one. But that's where it all finally came together. And I was excited about what I learned. So about 20 years ago, um, I started 
you know, my first company, Click Consulting, and it was very much, you know, one-on-one -on -one consulting, right? It was workbook development, VBA development. It was personal coaching, all that stuff. All of these experiences led to Excel University, and that's my best job ever because I have one simple goal, help people use Excel to work fast. And the way that I accomplish my goal is I've set up an online on-demand training platform designed to do just that. Help accountants, help people use Excel to work fast. And it's the best job ever. Why is it the best job? It's the best job ever because, because next to this cornfield in the middle of the country in, in South Dakota, I'm able to help people all over the world. That, that world map, those green shaded countries, those are my Excel University student countries. It's hard for me to believe that we have the technology, but we do. And it enables me to help people use Excel more effectively. And it is just so rewarding when people, when my students go, hey, Jeff, I just saved like 10 hours a month. I'm like, yes, good for you. And so it's great. It's the best job ever. And anyway, that's, that's my life journey. That's what's led me to you here today talking about Excel, okay? Now, time to move on. Time to move that report further to the right. How are we gonna do it? We're gonna use Power Query, okay? We're gonna use Power Query. Let me open up a workbook called Power Query. Okay. So, in the first workbook, I, I simplified things, okay? In practice, Sometimes our data comes from multiple places. Sometimes we have maybe a data table that has all the transactions, but this data table might not have all the information that you need for your report. Oftentimes there's, there's another table. Maybe it's a lookup table. The point is, sometimes the data that we need to, to use to build our report comes from multiple places and multiple tables. So, hmm. How can we like get this all combined so that we can build our report? Well, if you're familiar with um, VLOOKUP, that's been a very popular method for doing this for, for decades. And, and the idea is that we would go VLOOKUP, go find this over here and return you know, the account name or the FS name. We'd write a formula here and fill it down. But Every time we write a formula, okay, we are, we are now going to have to babysit that formula every month. Some months it'll work without modification, but some months we have to babysit it. We have to maybe fill it down for more rows. Maybe there's a range that changes, so we have to rewrite the range. Okay. So is there another option? Yeah, Power Query. Hold on, Jeff, wait. I I'm doing this with VLOOKUP. You could do this with VLOOKUP, but, but we're going to see that Power Query provides us with some additional benefits besides just replacing VLOOKUP. So we're just taking incremental steps here. Okay, so let's first try to do this first step without VLOOKUP. So the first thing I need to do is get this table into Power Query. How do I do that? I select any cell, and I go to Data, and I go to one of these Get and Transform commands. So these Get and Transform commands, this stuff is Power Query. If you have a fairly modern version of Excel, you're going to have this stuff right here. Okay. Um, and what is Power Query? Power Query is designed to, to get data from other places, and, and we can get data from lots of other places, from a bunch of different files, a bunch of different databases, from Azure, from a bunch of online services, from a bunch of other places. Here we're just going to get it from a table inside of Excel because it's just really easy to, to demonstrate. But this same series of steps that we're going to do also works when the data is outside of Excel. If it's in another CSV file, if it's in another workbook, if it's in another database. Okay? So it's designed to get that, clean it up. That's a techie term for, you know, that's a, a word that describes transform. Get and transform, that just means clean it up, make some edits, and then send the results into Excel. So first, we're going to click on any cell. We're going to say from table range. That's going to load the data into the Power Query editor. What is this? This is Power Query. Okay. And so what we would do is, if, if the data was clean, we're just going to send it back. But just while we're here, let me show you around a little bit. Transform, what's all this stuff? These are all those edit, those transformations you can do. Stuff like maybe we want to transpose it. 
Okay, maybe we want to split a column. Maybe we want to combine columns. Maybe we want to do some formatting, extract some cells, and there's a bunch of transformations we can do. Right, we could also do calculated columns, and there's some view options. Um, if you haven't played around in Power Query, I'm going to show you how to get some additional resources on this. This is an amazing tool. Our data looks pretty clean, so we're just going to close and load two, and we're going to send this to a connection-only query. Other options would be we want to send it to a table. And we don't want to do that because we're just taking a table in and like putting the table out. No, so we want to put it into a connection only query. We could also throw it into a pivot table report, a pivot chart, a bunch of other stuff. For now, we're just going to do only create connection and click OK. And when we do, we see it here in the queries and connections panel. And we could hover over it and get a preview. We could edit it, delete it, a bunch of stuff. Um, and if we close this data and, or this query and connections panel, we can always open that back up again just by going to data, queries and connections. We can toggle that on or off, no big deal. Um, but the point is, we've loaded our data table into Power Query. Now let's do the next one, lookup. Okay, how do we do it? Same steps from table range. This data looks good. If we had transformations to make, we could make them. Our data looks fine, so we're just going to close and load two. Connection only query, click OK. And by the way, I'm going to do this entire sequence of steps a second time. So I'm going to go through it once, and then in the next exercise, I'm going to go through the exact same steps again, Okay, just to kind of reinforce. Um, and so now I look at the queries and connections panel, and I see I have data and lookup. I have both of these tables inside Power Query. And now I need to sort of combine them. Historically, we would use something like a VLOOKUP to do that. But we don't have to when we're using Power Query. What we can do is say, get data, combine, merge. Hmm. What's that? Merge. It's like we're, we're, we're merging columns. It's like we're doing VLOOKUP. The other option would be a pen. That's where we're stacking tables on top of each other. In this case, we're merging, so we select Merge. And in the resulting Merge dialog, what we do is we select our data table. And we select our lookup table. And now this is a very important step. We have to tell Excel how these two tables are related to each other. Which column is the same? Which is the common or shared column? In this case, it's account ID. So we just pick it. And by the way, these, these column labels don't need to be the same. We just select the columns. And our join kind is left out, or the default is fine for us. There's other options depending on what you're working on. So we just click OK. And now we are taken to the Power Query editor. And here we have all of the data transactions. And then we have one column that represents the entire lookup table. And what we need to do at this point is tell Excel which columns from the lookup table we want. How do we do that? We just click this export icon. And now we tell it what columns we want. What do we want? Maybe we want the account name. Sure. Do we want the FS line? Sure. Do we want to prefix that with um, lookup dot, uh, you know, account name? No, we'll, we'll remove the prefix and just click OK. There we go. That replaced what we would traditionally use a formula like, like with a VLOOKUP function for. And now that this is here, we're going to close and load two. And we're going to take it to an existing worksheet. And let's select exercise one. And let's just put it right here. And click OK. OK, now the merge happens. And yes, here's our results. Okay, here's our results. Jeff, time out. That was a lot more complicated than VLOOKUP. I know, but listen, we're just taking incremental steps here. We're about to see that, v, that Power Query is actually going to replace like a bunch of things. So let's just kind of think through this here. First of all, it replaced the traditional copy-paste step. Now, in this illustration, the data was already here in Excel, right? It was already here. I copy and pasted it in. But in practice, we can use these same steps and use Power Query to get data from other sources. For example, if this data was originally in a CSV file, how did it get here? We copy-pasted it. We can eliminate that copy-paste step by using Power Query and go to retrieve the data from the CSV file or from like wherever else it might be. 
So we Excel users, we get stuck on this a lot. We don't even realize there's a manual step of getting the data into the workbook in the first place. That's manual. That's copy paste. In fact, it's so common. Do you know what the number one Excel command is? Paste. Paste. That's the number one Excel command. That's why it gets such prominence. It's on the very first tab, the very first button. It's big too, right? So, so we've just eliminated that copy paste. We also just eliminated the VLOOKUP, right? Because we've merged these without using a formula. We don't have any formulas to babysit or update. Can it replace more? Yeah, it can even replace the sum ifs. Remember, the sum if allowed us to add up the values for cash and cash equivalents, and then to provide a sum for prepaids and deposits. Power, Power Query can replace that as well. How? Let's go check it out. I want to edit that merge query. So how do we edit? We can, you know, hover over and click edit. We can double click. But now we're back in Power Query. So let's do a transformation. Let's select FS line. And by the way, again, I'm going to go through this entire sequence of steps a second time. But I select FS line. And then I go to transform. And then I click group by. Group by. So I click group by. And what happens? It allows me to group by FS line. What does that mean? Group by. It's like, give me one row for every unique value in the FS line column. That's what group by is. Great, so I'm going to get that. And then do I want any calculations? Yes, I want a new column. It's going to be called amount. What is it going to contain? In our case, the sum of the amount column. Really? Yeah, check it out. Boom. <laughs> okay. Now we've just replaced some ifs all with Power Query. We replace copy paste, copy paste, VLOOKUP some ifs. Now let's just close and load, and, and there's our updated table. And as you can see at this point, like we are so close to our report, we have all of the exact numbers that we need. We have the rows, the labels that we need. The problem is what? The problem is this isn't in the report structure that we need. This doesn't look like, like our report, like our target balance sheet. Th this looks just like a table. It is a table. So, we're so close. But don't worry. We are going to take the next step, okay, in the next exercise. So, I'm going to go through all of these steps again in the next exercise, and then we're going to talk about how we're going to move this farther to the right, okay, move it from manual to automated. So, let me go ahead and close this. Let's go back here. And let's take a look at this. Additional resources. VLOOKUP on multiple columns and return text. OK. That whole process where we pulled in two tables into Power Query and then did the combined merge and identified the lookup columns, I have a blog post uh, that you can use to check it out. So in addition to these formal published articles, I also write informally. And they are um, blog posts. So you can click on blog and and you can search. And by the way, there's a subs subscribe uh, field here. Um, you don't need to subscribe using this form because in the webinar registration page, I indicated you're going to get a free subscription to the Excel Uni University blog. That's this. So you're already going to be subscribed to the blog. And that just means I'm going to send you an email every time I write a new Excel article. It's going to be about once a week. And it's not going to hurt my feelings if you click unsubscribe. But I hope you decide to stick around and learn Excel right along with me because I learn stuff about Excel all the time. And when I do, I usually write about it. So I'd love it if you'd stick around and continue learning Excel right along with me. But you can click on Topics. So you can click on any topic you want to learn more about. And this time I clicked on Power Query. And it took me to this uh, post here called VLOOKUP on Multiple Columns and Return Text. Click on that and it's going to take you to the steps of importing two tables, doing that combined merge, and picking the, the return columns. Okay, so, uh, so feel free to check that out if that will be of, of use. Now hold on, Jeff. You talked about this whole Excel University thing with all the, like, the training. Where's the stuff we talked about? How, how advanced is this training? How easy is this training? Where, like, where, where are these topics? Okay, let, let's just unpack this really briefly. The topics that we talked about today fall into the undergraduate and master's tracks. Hold on, break that down. All right, I have two main tracks, 
undergraduate, you know, because it's XO University, cute, right? Undergraduate, and there's four classes, four years, four courses. And then there's master's. Master's one and master two. So there's basically two courses for master's. And they're all in a, in, in really in a progression that moves us from manual to automated. Now, you don't have to start at the beginning. You jump in anywhere, you know, wherever you are on your journey. You jump right in wherever, wherever you are. Maybe you want to start at the beginning. Maybe you want to, maybe you're like, I already got the classic Excel stuff, so I want to get more te technical topics. So jump right into master's. So anyway, that's an idea of, of where all of these topics fit in and, and what the courses cover. But at this point, it's time to move our report further to the right. And we're going to use the data model to do it. So let me go ahead and open up a workbook called data model. All right. So I said I was going to go through that entire sequence of steps again. This is where I'm going to do it. I have my data table. I need to get into the Power Query. Do you remember how to do that? Data from table range. This opens up the Power Query editor. Things look good. So we're going to close and load to. And just like before, we're going to send it to a connection only query and click OK. OK, data loads. We're looking good. We do the same thing with lookup from table range. Close and load to. Connection only query, click OK. OK, the next one we needed to do was the, the merge, right? So we go to get data, combine queries, merge. And just like before, we select data, we select lookup, we select our columns, and we click OK. Now, we need to identify which columns in the lookup table we want. How did we do that? We just clicked the expand icon. And actually, we only need the FS line, so I'm just going to select that and click OK. Now we just replace the copy paste to get it into the file. We just replaced the VLOOKUP. Let's replace the sum ifs. Do you remember how to do that? We select FS line, go to transform and group by. Now we do a new column named amount, and it is going to be the sum of the amount column. And we click OK. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. Now we just need to close and load two. Now, last time, what did we do? We sent this to a table in a worksheet, right? This time, we're going to send it to the data model. And we're going to use a connection-only query. So we do connection-only query, add this to the data model, and we click OK. And now it loads, but we don't see it. Like, where would it go? It's still here. It's in the workbook. It's just not in a table. Well, Jeff, if we can't see it, like, what, what, what can we do with it? How can we access it? How can we summarize it? One really easy way is to build a pivot table using the data model as the data source. Wait, hold on. I've built pivot tables before, but I've always used a table as the data source. Exactly. The data model becomes the data source. Okay, so let's let's see how we can do this. Insert pivot table. And this is where we see it. Use this workbook's data model. So what is this data model? Well, think of it as a place to organize tables and write formulas that we can use in our reports. And in this, you know, I only have you for 60 minutes, so we're only covering, you know, just the surface. But but we're going to grab that table that is stored in the data model and we're going to summarize it in a pivot table. So we're going to use this workbook's data model as the source for our pivot table rather than a table or range like we may have done before. And we click OK. And now we see the familiar pivot table panel and an image here, but we don't see a list of fields. We see a list of tables. So what's this? Well, data and lookup, that's this table and this table. And we have merge one. That's the values that we sent into the data model. So we can just expand it. And what we can do is just uh, check these checkboxes to insert them into the, the report layout area. We want to view it by FS line, done, and amount, done. Now, at this point, we're looking pretty good. Okay, but there's still a problem. And the problem is, this isn't in our report structure. 
right? If you remember, this is the report structure. This doesn't really look like this. So what's the deal? Here's the deal. When our report fits within the pivot table structure, let's go with pivot table. They're, they're awesome. But we really need a formula-based report here to get it into this exact structure that we need. Why? Because we can insert you know, rows, we can insert columns, apply whatever formatting. A formula report is just more flexible. We can kind of position things wherever we want. Not really true in a pivot table. So, hmm. We kind of want, you know, the benefit of a pivot table, pulling information from a data model. But we really need the flexibility of formulas. So, hmm. Is there a way to set up like a formula to pull values from the data model? Yes. Yes, that's where we're going. That's exactly right. So how do we do this? It's easy, and I, I've got my, my Excel friend Rob Colley to thank for this. Thank you, Rob. This was an amazing um, uh, tip that you provided. Um, but, but, but before I do the command that converts this to formulas, I want to point out one little detail. This field is called amount. Okay? Look down here. This is called sum of amount. And that's that's subtle, but but there's a difference here. This is the field amount. This is an implicit measure. What what's that? That's just a fancy term. It means Excel assumed you wanted to sum up the amount. And and we could change the 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 math, you know. But it's creating a formula that aggregates the values. And it does that all automatically behind the scenes. But this is going to come up here in a minute. So just remember, the, the measure here that we're, that we're using in our pivot table is called sum of amount. Okay, And then we have these, these FS line row labels. Okay, Now, since we built our pivot table based on the data model, we have this command available convert to formulas. Had we instead built a pivot table on an ordinary range, like a traditional pivot table, that command's disabled. But since we built this pivot table on the data model, this is what we get. Pivot table tools, OLAP tools, convert to formulas. Now before I click it, let's just take a look here. I have blue formatting, I have a pivot table, I have pivot table fields. Okay, Now watch what happens when I do convert to formulas. and. <laughs> Okay, see what just happened here? Pivot table's gone. In its place are formulas. Formulas that use cube functions to pull values from the data model. Now this is great because now we have the flexibility of a formula-based report. For example, I, I could insert rows wherever I want. I, I could apply whatever formatting I want. I could insert columns wherever I want. So the key is we want to take this formula and move it into here so that we can fill it down. Okay. So we just need to make a couple of modifications. Now let me zoom in here so it's a little easier to see. Okay. We need to make a couple of modifications. So first of all, let's just unpack this. Cube value, what's that? It's a function that returns a value from, from where? Well, let's look at this first argument. The first argument says this workbook data model. Okay, so it's pulling a value from this workbook's data model. That makes sense. The next argument is what? It's this row label, accounts payable. And the third argument is what? It's this label here, sum of amount. So all we need to do in order to copy this formula and paste it into our report is make a couple of little tweaks. The first tweak is, instead of referencing C12, we want to, to give this the name. But we can't just type like sum of amount. You know, we can't just type it in. So the syntax is that we have to enclose it in square brackets. And this is a text argument, so I'm going to close that in quotes. So quote, open square bracket, sum of amount, close square bracket, close text, enter. Okay, and now this one will work without referencing this cell. So if I, if I actually delete that, so this one works and the rest break, let me undo, and it's because I've replaced that. So hold on, do that one one more time. Okay, no problem. Let's just grab C12, delete it, and then re enclose in, in quotes, sum of amount inside of square brackets. 
So quote, quote, open and close square bracket, sum of amount, enter. Okay, and now we got it. Okay, and then we need to do something similar for this label. So instead of B13, we want to wrap that square brackets around it, but we can't just type in square brackets like this. We have to enclose those inside of quotes. So like, how do we do that? Square brackets with a quote, square bracket with a quote. But we can't just do this either. What we have to do is add a concatenation operator in here. So hold on, what's this concatenation? Concatenation just means join, right? This ampersand just means join. So what we're doing is we're, we're joining this open square bracket to the text that's here and then we're putting a closing square bracket. It's really the same, same idea as what we did here for sum of amount. And then I don't want this to be an absolute reference to column B, so I'm just gonna delete that dollar sign and hit enter. And by the way, this formula is available in that download. So if you're trying to work along, you know, just realize this formula is provided for you, so, so uh, it makes it a nice reference. But anyway, now that I've made those changes, now I can copy and Paste, paste, paste. 266313, 266313. And now we got it. Okay, now I can just apply whatever formatting that I'd like to. Okay, and I can, you know, add whatever cosmetics I want. But this is great. This is great. Why? Because now, when, when there's new transactions, okay, when there's new accounts, when there's new values in a lookup table, more rows in the transaction table. Do we have to do any updates? Do we have to go through this again? No. No, all we have to do is click data, refresh all. That's it. That's our update now. Sort order doesn't matter. New rows are automatically included. There's no VLOOKUP to babysit, no SUMIFs to babysit, no pivot tables to refresh. It's just refresh all. It's done. That's, <laughs> that's how to move our report from manual to automated. But Jeff, it's actually not automated. I mean, you still have to click a button. Then how do you do that manually? Well, all right, fine. Fine, you want to go there? Let's go there. What do you say that instead of having to click this button, which is a total, you know, drag, I know. <laughs> um, but instead of having to click that button, what do you say we just have this whole update sequence run automatically when we open up the workbook. Can we do that? Yeah, we can do that. Let's go to queries and connections. Right click merge one, go to properties. All we need to do is check the refresh data when opening file. Click OK. And now guess what? When we open up this workbook, the refresh sequence begins and it is done. That's how we stop wasting time. That's how Excel knowledge helps us go from manual to automated, same report, <laughs> just requires a lot less work. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this down. Let's go to the next thing. The next thing is a resource how to build a pivot table with the data model. If you've never seen building a pivot table with the data model before, I want to take you to this blog post. Just head to the Excel University blog and click on um, uh, either pivot table or power pivot, and it's going to take you to that post and you can, uh, you can check it out. It's going to basically take you through you know, the very first pivot table using the data model. Feel free to check that out if it's going to be um, helpful. I hope that the things we talked about will help you get your work done faster, stop wasting time, and move from manual to automated. Thanks so much. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.